In this tutorial, I want to demonstrate how to download MD5 Deep and install it on your computer and then how to use it. So we're going to go to md5deep.sourceforge.net. So that's md5deep.sourceforge.net. When we come to the site, we'll click on the first link to download MD5 Deep. We'll click on that. It drives us down the page to the download area and we'll see the current version, the date that it was updated. We'll see the Windows binary. This is what we want to download. But I want to keep this screen here because I want to come back to this SHA-256 hash and uh, see if the file that I download is uh, in fact the file that uh, they originally put up on the server. So what I'm going to do in order for this current screen not to go away, I'm going to right click on Windows Binary and click Open Link in New Tab, which will create a new tab on my Firefox browser. Go there and it's going to tell me that the download will start here in a few seconds. I'm going to select the option to save the file because I want to run a test to see if it is the uh, file and not corrupted in some way. So we see the download progressing. Once the file is downloaded, I'll go to the folder where it's downloaded, which is my downloads folder. This is where I see the file. It's a zipped file download. I'm going to right click and select extract all. Have it open in the same place. Now we see the MD5 deep folder is unzipped from the downloaded file. I'm going to open that folder and look at all of the files that are here. These are executable files and when you run uh, when you run these files they do not uh, actually install into your operating system. They just run. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to select all of these. I'm going to go cut because what I want is to have all of these right here in my downloads file. I'm just going to paste them right here. Now I probably could delete some of these that I won't normally use but unless you're going to install this program in your uh, system environment as, a, as an environment variable then what you need to do is just leave these here and since my purpose is to uh, run the hashes of the files that I download then I'm just going to leave these executables here in my downloads folder. Now I'm going to go then since that is already downloaded I'm going to open the command window by going to Windows and type CMD which will open the command line window and for this uh, little test I've done here I've created a file uh, here called uh, test.txt if I right click and open that file you'll see here it just says this is a test document that's all there is to it. So I'm going to go back to my command window here so you see that I'm currently located here at C and in the users directory and in the user one uh, part of the user directory. So what I'm going to do now is just type dir which is the Windows command for show me the directory and when I do that I will see that there is a folder here called downloads. It is a directory so it's a folder it's called downloads so what I'm going to do is simply come down here and say CD for change directory, change directory, downloads. And I get no error message and I see that I'm still in users, user1, downloads now. So I'm going to type DIR for directory here. And what I'm going to see here are all of these files that I see in this current folder because right now I am in users, user1, downloads and up here you can see that I'm in user1, downloads so I'm in the same place and what you see here are the list of files and folders that we see here in this same window. 
Now, if you do not install these hashing executable files into your system environment, then you have to have these executables in the same folder with the file that you want to test. So right now I want to run the SHA-256 test. So here we see SHA-256 deep. And then I'm going to, uh, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll just go ahead and leave this as SHA-256 deep for right now. And I want to run this against the folder right here called md5deep-4.0.1.zip. So I'm going to come here and type md 5 deep dash 4.0.1.zip and hit enter and one of the things I'm going to see right off is a warning message that you're running a 32-bit program on a 64-bit system now I know that this computer is a 64-bit system let me show you how I know that I'm going to come down to the Windows start click it I'm going to come up to computer right click and select properties and when I do we'll see here the system information for this computer and you'll see here that my processor is uh, what it is and this is a 64-bit system so I'm going to close this window I know I need to be running the 64-bit now even though it gave me a hash here that I can take a look at. I still should never run this 32-bit hash on a 64-bit system. So I want to come back in and run this now using not SHA-256 deep, but SHA-56 deep.64. Now rather than type all of that again, I'm just going to hit the up arrow key, which will bring in my last command. And I'm going to use the arrow key now left to go back to right after deep. And I'm going to type 64. You don't have to type the .exe. So now I have SHA-256 deep 64 with a space. And then the name of the file that I want to test. Enter. I get no warning message. So this is the hash that I have to compare. I'm just going to pull this over to the side. I'm going to click back now on that original tab where I could see the 256 hash of the uh, file that I downloaded. And what I want to do is make sure that this number here, all of this number, is exactly uh, what I get when I run the hash here. So we see that it begins with B6DEB. So come down here, B6DEB. 5C, 5C038, 5C038 is looking good. I never try to read the whole thing. I just come over now to the end of it, and it ends with F9E475. It's F9E475, and that is uh, verification now that the file that I downloaded to my computer has identically the same hash as the file that was on that server. So let me show you what usefulness th what usefulness this has in uh, practical application. You recall that when I set up this folder originally, I had a file in here called test.txt. In this case, I'll just run the md5 hash. So I'm going to go md5 deep 64. That's the name of the file that I have here. Let me open the folder to show you. So you have here in this user one downloads folder, I have all of these uh, hash deep and hash deep 64. And here's the MD5 deep and the MD5 deep 64. I can run any of those. So I'm going to run MD5 deep 64 since I know that I have a 64 bit processor. And I'm going to run it on this file called test.txt. And you'll see here that the hash is 73B and, and so on. You'll get 32 characters here. So what I want to do now is go back into this folder. I'm going to open up this file. And I will just take out that period. That's all we'll do. Go File, Save. 
and close. We come back in here now. This time I want to run exactly the same hash against exactly the same file, but you and I both know that I just changed that file. So I'll hit enter. Now what we see here is that the hash has changed. It was 7EB778, now it's 49C11. And uh, this is definitely a changed hash. And the only difference was that I took out the period in that second file. But that's the point. The file has changed. If you're downloading a file and you don't and you want to make sure that that file has not picked up a virus or maybe you've gotten only part of the file, what you can do is to run these hashing uh, programs against the file that you download, compare the hash with the hash that is reported on the server site, and if it's the same hash, then you know that you got exactly the same file.